guest uh, and also my co-host here, uh, Charulo, uh, Tembas Prasanna, Masilo Rikuru. So we'll be talking all things fear and revolution. Uh, over to you, my sister. We are speaking of fear and revolution because uh, we believe there's a major linkage, but it would make sense if we actually understand what fear is, what fear means to us. And I believe that we could ask um, our other guests what they make of just the concept of fear, the idea of fear, how it relates to them as individuals and uh, as a collective, what do we make of fear before we get into the idea of revolution? Yeah, yeah. So my brother, kindly give us yeah. a glimpse of what you as to what is fear. As a, as a personal expression, I would say that, you know, well, maybe I would also give um, this with respect to personal experiences with this concept of fear, right? And how, I um, mean, many instances when I was, you know, overcome by it, um, what type of effects it has had. Like on a, at a personal level, so for me, I found that of course you know this um, um, uh, fear, which in a way you know, um, in most cases of, after you know you get hindsight, you find that it's in most cases a, an irrational type of um, um, feeling or experience, in that you know you find that it paralyzes you in how you need to engage or deal with whatever you you know you are scared of or you know you find fearful. So I, I would say that for the most part, it has been a, 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 a form of like a, an experience of paralysis of sorts, you know, in simple terms. So as a collective, I would, I would also um, push it to that extreme as well, and that collectively it does is that, and it's, it's a, a feeling that is contagious. I've noticed that, you know, if we are as a collective, there's certain individuals within our, amongst our midst who, you know, I'm overcome by this feeling of fear. It has sometimes like this tendency of, you know, um, being contagious and um, influencing or, or affecting, you know, other members. And, you know, you find in most cases also that as children, you know, children are also perceptive or are able to sense at times when, you know, their parents or elders are overcome or, you know, um, are experiencing this thing of fear and they also become fearful as well. So this is, it has the type of effect as well, um, at a personal as well as at a collective level. So I think for now, um, since of course I, we haven't really gotten deep or we haven't really got into the question of revolution, I may mean, just maybe, you know, pack it for the I get you, I get you, my brother. So now, where does this fear spring from? Like this fear that we're talking about, where does it come from? I think it's important that we outline the history of it before yeah. we get into the discussion yeah um or should i should i should i yeah, take it or should you can can maybe the question uh um yeah i mean i suppose if we if we think of the um the human mind as as um you know i don't want to use materialistic terms like an instrument but if you think of the human mind as 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 an organ and or you know something that uh, processes information and and helps us helps us to be in contact with reality. Um, what fear does, as my brother said, is is, is that it, it 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 makes one to be incapable of, of of trying to think of solutions. Right? If you're confronted with a problem and you know uh, as a human being you cannot be in a position where you confront the problem and then come up with the, with uh, a solution. So fear paralyzes you. To a point where you're just incapable of, of, of formulating solutions and, and and collectively it's the same thing you know it might be a form of a repressed feeling that you know in a way influences you without you actually consciously realizing that uh, in this instance you're not you're not able to attain a particular goal because you're paralyzed by this fear right so it can be conscious so you can be aware that okay I'm scared of this reality I cannot face it I cannot confront it so we can think Think of fear as, as, as something that operates at the level of the unconscious. Uh, we can also, you know, think about it as something that operates at the level of the conscious. So, you know, but the conscious and the, un the, con the unconscious are, of course, intertwined. So, it depends on a particular situation. So, if you think of the history of violence, let's say we have a particular group of people who are invaded and were subjected to, uh, uh, you know, violence, you know, throughout, you know, let's say for 
for centuries, you know, for 300 years, it becomes an intergenerational thing, right? One generation inherits the fear that the previous generation uh, had. So it might be a repressed feeling that the group that is oppressed and subjected to this violence is not able to actually conceptualize fear, you know, but in their daily interaction, they actually, you know, manifest that feeling of fear. Now that it's operating at the level of the unconscious, they cannot really talk about it. But it's more dangerous because it's something that actually influences their decisions uh, and whatever they do. Even as an individual, if you have experienced a traumatic experience and 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 fear was uh, was the determining factor, you can all you can be fearful of doing simple things without actually realizing, not understanding. But why am I incapable of achieving this? Why am I incapable of attaining this particular thing? But it's because of that repressed fear that. Um, you're supposed to confront and deal with so that you can be able to see that no, whatever I'm trying to deal with is actually simple, you know, I can actually solve this problem. I just, just a question over there. Yeah. In relation to um, what Brother Temba had answered, uh, 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 his answer, um, he referred to something like a collective paralysis, right? right. Yeah. Um, I guess in, in, in relation to revolution so i'm hearing you explain fear and and in my mind i can't i can't make uh peace with the fact that fear always has to result in paralysis so yes um the human mind you might be um, um incapable to make some decisions you might be overwhelmed and all of that but that is not the only way to respond i believe that um there's some instances that you are uh, 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 experiencing fear, but you have to do something. Actually, it is the fear that actually um, 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 nourishes or encourages some sort of action. You you actually um, get some sort of energy from that fear itself. So, are you saying that there's a relation with fear and paralysis because of the condition of our people in terms of you know this is what we see, or there is some sort of way we can actually redirect this fear to actually um, 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 do something about it? I don't think that fear always results in some sort of paralysis. What would you say? Yeah, I mean that's true. So I was thinking of fear, you know, in the classical biological. If you think about fear as something that can motivate you to do something. So, for instance, if you are a human being and you're confronted with a dangerous situation, right, and you can see that, okay, in terms of the so-called, you know, right. principle, right. yeah, it's the principle of self-preservation, right? You can see that, okay, here you can either fight or you can either, you know, run away. So, with the rush of the adrenaline, of course, you know, the, the feeling itself motivate you to preserve yourself right to say okay this is a dangerous situation I'm scared of what's uh, what I'm confronted with but because I need to survive I need to preserve myself you know the instinct of self-preservation the fear itself can motivate you can be um, uh, a positive factor in terms of you know you confronting reality at that particular time especially given time constraints right like you can see that okay I either act now or that's it. That's the end of that's the end of uh, that's the end of my life. But in relation to you know collect you know uh, if you think about human beings in general, if you let's just you know historicize it and you know and and try to connect it with, I mean try to formulate the idea of fear as something that can be you know a positive thing. If you think about you know you know conventional history of South Africa, if you think about the 1960s, you know with the uh, apartheid regime imposing you know the you know suppression of communism act. And other, you know, you know, uh, states of emergencies to deal with the uh, the Pan Africanist Party and the, the Pan Africanist Congress, rather, and the ANC. Um, you know, people like Steve Biko and and many others who sort of, you know, emerged at that particular time. There's the narrative that there was a lull at the time, right? The particular uh, a political lull. So when the young people emerged, you know, in terms of this conventional history, the idea was that. You know, our parents have, you know, uh, have succumbed to fear. You know, uh, fear has basically paralyzed them. This doesn't mean that the young people were not scared. They knew that the military regime that they were confronted with is powerful, and this, you know, the, when they were looking at their parents, they could see, okay, this is the result, and this is this is powerful stuff. But due to their fear itself, they were able to see that look. Uh, 
it's irrational our parents of course have succumbed if we succumb then that's the end of us as a, as a people so it doesn't mean that they were not scared at the time they were aware of the apartheid regime they were aware of the power but the fear itself motivated them to say you know what part of this uh part of the the resistance and and dealing with 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 the enemy is basically suppressing the idea you know the fear of death itself you know steve biko gives a number of examples especially in a right where I like the last chapter where he talks about um he talks about death, you know, because this fear basically has to do with, with, with death. Death paralyzes you. So he talks about how, you know, death itself, you are either alive or, you know, something like proud. Or if you're dead, you know, it doesn't matter at all. But the, the idea that when you want to resist, when you want to, you know, fight for your life and the survival of a particular group of people, you have to succumb the idea of fear. And he talks about death, you know. Uh, as something that is irrational. So, you know, when you think about death as something that is irrational, then fear itself, you know, um, you know, um, you know, um, is endowed with some kind of, you know, positive connotations. You are scared, you are aware that you're going to die, but you're willing to sacrifice your, 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 you know, your life in the process. But this is not to promote the idea of martyrdom that people have to, mm -hmm. you know, be excited about death, you know, to say that, oh, we all want to die, we just want to sacrifice ourselves, you know. Thinkers like Abu Chinwais would warn us that, you know, we shouldn't, as black people, even though we are resisting, we shouldn't be obsessed with the idea of dying, of sacrificing our, you know, our lives, but we should, uh, imagine victory. We should imagine ourselves surviving the confrontation with the enemy itself. So the fear itself should lead us not to think about us dying in the process, but saying that we're going to win. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's also uh, maybe, if I may, also maybe chip in and chime in with a few um, thoughts as well. There's also this, you know, effect that um, fear has on one, and I think this is the stuff that they would cover in the fields of psychoanalysis. You know where they speak of you know sometimes um when you know you've um experienced or enjoyed um, um suffering from the hands of maybe an aggressor and whatnot you at times gets to also associate with or identify with your aggressor right and this we also see in a collective way in which in, in ways in which you know um of course i mean there are also questions of you know missing education you know issues of you know being alienated from our ways and 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 mores and all those things right but there are also those things where you struggle so much that you find that um I operate within this the very same system which we see like a lot of like um our people as well like moving along that route where you know they like now are the enablers of you know white supremacy of you know of um the oppression of other segments of the population where you know they feel like you know they don't in a way um or maybe they are in a way qualified um whites of sorts you know different from other africans who perhaps uh, continue with you know embracing um their culture as a way of being so you see like this also way of not wanting to associate with with blackness or with Africanness, because of the effects that um, white supremacy have, um, or, or 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 the or the threat that you know whiteness has towards blackness, or the 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 the, 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 the suffering you know that you you did you do encounter experience as, as an African. So there is also that you know um, um, element when it you know. Um, yeah. So, like so how like how how has uh, this fear affected the black experience? You understand? Because the black experience as we see today has been distorted and is operating within a Eurocentric cultural orientation. You understand? So how has this uh, seed of fear that has been implanted in the collective consciousness of the black community affected us as to how we even relate to one another as Africans? I'd say... Um and I'm just making a comment in, in relation to uh, what Brother Temba has said and also my co-host over here. Um, um, when we think about fear, uh, there's a huge link between fear and individualism. So um, um, we'd have to think in terms of the two cradle theory and, and, and you know, the nature of our own people as Africans and, and the nature of Europeans, the nature of where white supremacy basically comes from, um, their culture as well. So um, in terms of the two cradle theory, Bona, self, they are 
individualistic. So you 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 if you're individualistic because you salu pili one, um you have to be always afraid of the other, always um um afraid of being dominated, um always you know it's always survival for the fittest, it's always um um it's all about you. Um, there's, there's things that can happen. I mean, I don't know how it led to cannibalism. I guess it's because of, you know, the environment in which they come from. Vele, they, they didn't have much because it's a, it's a, it's an environment of ice and, and Bapila Bordwa. Um, and they're unable to, 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 to relate with one another. Um, and even if they relate with one another, there's that fear, Yoguti, this person <laughs> will do something to me. Whereas Tina, as a band, as Pilang Ubuntu, um, there's no need for fear because the song ke usabani, you know, um, 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 you are me and I am you. Uh, siya pilisa na la, where you don't have nya pindeng kali se, you know. Um, so the fear, um, already in itself, in terms of African people, is suppressed by our way of living, you know. So it, it's not there. Um, it's not something that you think of. Um, 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 especially fearing your own brother or sister. That that, that I mean, Melin Pilisani. So um, um, Sabanjan. So now the problem of 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 you know, uh, in terms of in terms of your comments and question, when we interact with the people of ICE, you know, when we interact with them, they come and introduce this culture of individualism. Giti. Uh, well, and it's bigger chaivini because like you know we are people we are collective people you know see seven that song gave me spirit of ubuntu yeah <laughs> you know when i'm a big about me myself and i so but that's a le fear none of my bears about those dominator it does not mean that they don't have the fear they have the fear actually but practice a bona self but still while they were dominating each other they did have that fear so they come and they use um, um brother masilo was saying uh, in terms you can you can use your fear in another way so they use their fear to actually empower them uh, uh, uh give them that energy to dominate us and then actually instill their culture in us and uh, now now siatuga because by introducing individualism so then we have this fear that we have to deal with but we have to remember that it's not within us it's not our culture it's because of identifying with the aggressor um with the the, the person who comes from a different uh environment with the enemy so i don't know what um brother temba would say to that but this is this is this is my thinking around that yeah yeah of course i mean Oh, the likes of Papa, uh, Mama um, Francis Cress was saying, uh, also I mean, spoke about, in fact, their you know, level of aggression towards us is also informed by the fear that they have towards you know, um, um, us as you know, a melanated people. And of course, I mean, there are many things that they see with regards to, and in fact, I won't shy away and speak about, you know, um, no, I mean, there's a, a form of maybe us all being equal, like, there is a sense that in which they understand we are superior to them. So yes. there's certain things that there's times like we're afraid to speak of and that maybe we are no like, no, it's not about dominating the other, it's not being about the one being better but than the other one, right. but natural. And they are well aware of it. And in fact, there are many even studies that they, they do in the, with regards to melanin more than we do. In that field, it is mostly them. They have conferences where we are not even invited, where they discuss um, um, this, you know, phenomena of e-melanin, right? And of course, then the aggression, then it will also inform the aggression that they have towards us and also also wanting to control the numbers. Like, you know, they have their eugenics um, 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 projects, whether it is to, you know, um, outright genocide campaigns or, or, or controlling um, how we, you know, reproduce and, you know, and contaminating our environment and all those things that would also limit us how we uh, multiply and how we, you know, um, um, positively live amongst our, 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 our one another so there's also i mean this part that you know you were um, sp um speaking and i think also um i, I love how we, um our sister um um also um touched on that part with regards to you know when you're now alienated you know there's also now when you now identify with an alien culture and whatnot then you know this concept of in if yeah and you know now you'll take on these um, attributes that they have where you know they are also aggressive and and in fact it was specific to in which direction it is going so when you take that you are not you won't be aggressive just at any random body it will be specific it's directed it will be directed at other africans or other black bodies because right? that's 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 how 
um, it was manufactured and how, that is how it was um, from the from the from the moment that in fact we had our first encounter, they had that f type of you know um, 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 type of like feeling according to you know the likes of of all Mama Chris Woods or something like that. And their studies, I suppose, I mean, they may also maybe have these private conferences that they have with the to melanin, um, but they're not the only ones. I mean, there are many giant um, um, scholars and researchers amongst our members, right, who have also. Um, um, done this thing, and it is it, it is it is um, um, interesting that you know um, many of the um, people who, who have you know done this, they will even even argue that um, the, even the, the ingredients that even make us human would be the melanin. So melanin is like the um, a, a a a a form of like an element or a phenomenon that makes a bio biochemical. Um, product that even makes Ubuntu possible. So without the absence of it, you can't even, you know, um, 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 have or create human relations, you know, with other beings. Hence why, you know, even amongst themselves, besides like, you know, our relations with us as maybe people who, who when they, they, you know, they encounter, they, they have or experience this type of fear, even amongst themselves, um, they can't just really like, have a way which they relate so in a way but of course i mean i don't think like you know um in this babes um, um podcast alone yeah. we can maybe um, delve deeper into uh, matters you know relating to many but they they form like an important and industrial part in this um <laughs> this type of discourse yeah yeah i wanted to 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 uh to you know to go back to what um you know uh, the relation between fear and uh, and the black experience, right? I mean, there are many things that we can refer to. You know, just to paraphrase Amos Wilson, you know, he once said that, um, you know, I guess you know, black people had this black fear because they were not trained to kill white people. You know, um, it is that conditioning. You know, you're not conditioned to see, you know, white as the enemy, right? You know, your Bobby Wright and others will talk about um, the race war that has been, you know. Um, Embarked upon all ways by the Europeans, and that you know, and and that the the Africans are the only ones who are not aware of, or at least trying not to, you know, to acknowledge or to to to, to see that okay, the, you know, there's a race war going on, and and part of part of part of the problem here, you know, in relation to fear and black experience is that now, you know, I'm going back to the, you know, Brother Tembers, you know, psycho psychoanalytical or psychological analysis of this whole thing. So what happens is not just the identification with the aggressor, right? We all know about that, even at the level of individual psychology. But also at the level of corrective psychology, we also have the, the notion of displaced aggression, right? So what happens is that, you know, a particular group of people are oppressed and then there's the oppressor group, right? So the oppressor group, you know, imposes some kind of violence on the oppressed group. Then the, 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 the oppressed group is terrified to a point where they internalize the aggression and then they cannot you know directed to the right enemy right what they do is that they end up killing themselves you know Amos Wilson will talk about black on black violence you know in the, you know you know you know advancing the interest of white supremacy so to give us a, a simple South African example if you look at Operation Duduga right it's an expression of you know the internalized aggression that is directed to Africans to people who look like us of course because of self-hatred but the fundamental problem there is that you know the enemy is actually avoided Yes. You know, they know the problem, okay, we have a problem, but the enemy is intentionally avoided and then the aggression is directed towards, you know, our, our own people. And this is why, you know, a lot of white settlers would not have a problem with, 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 with Operation to do that because they simply say, okay, it's just blacks killing themselves. Yeah. And because they're killing themselves, we are safe, yes. you know, uh, so that kind of fear for them serves the interest of, you know, in, in that sense, serves the interest of, of white supremacy. So going back to this, uh, the, the sister, of course, she's problematic in the States called uh, Angela Davis. You know, uh, she was teaching at UCLA at some point during the era of the Black Panther, right? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if it was her inaugural lecture as a professor at UCLA, but, you know, she was uh, talking about lectures on, on, uh, on liberation, you know, the idea of freedom and liberation. So she was referring to um, Frederick Douglass. So Frederick Douglass was one of the uh, you know, one of the, you know, one of our, you know, ancestors in the States, as it were, in the diaspora. So, 
in, in, his, in his autobiography, Life and Times of Frederick Douglass, he talks about how at some point, you know, uh, he had to confront what is called a slave breaker. So a slave breaker, so in a plantation, you would have a slave breaker who's responsible for, you know, instilling the fear, terrifying, you know, the enslaved, you know, Africans to a point where they can, you know, submit to the system of white supremacy. So he said that, you know, uh, Frederick Douglass says that at some point, he had to confront the fear. The fear was that it was instilled every day, you know, they his name is Colvin so he said he said look today I'm gonna confront him and and, and, and in the process I'm, you know I'm going to defeat him so in other words he made a relation between fear and freedom he said that in order for me to attain freedom I have to suppress fear I have to deal with the fear I suppose you can say I have to actively use fear you know in, in the attainment of freedom and one of the one of the the interesting points that he raises is that it's similar to what Biko was saying to actually confront you know the fear of death so he said that then he tackled the guy and then he defeated him so when when he was tackling the guy Kobe couldn't believe it remember he's a slave breaker he's used to the idea of black submitting to him because throughout the you know the years you know they were actually you know terrified by these people and then he said that at a particular time after he defeated Kobe he felt like a man of course i mean they're you know you know they're sort of you know sexist connotations there but the point is that at that point he felt like he was fully human he was able to suppress fear and 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 you know and and and, and, and confront the enemy and this is similar to what uh franz fanon is talking about you know i think in the chapter on violence in the wretched of the earth where he's basically saying that um the idea of violence you know which is only capable if the oppressed group suppresses fear also has what we can call a cathartic effect. A cathartic effect, it has a, a way of you releasing fear and other negative sentiments that actually cripple you towards, you know, attaining freedom. So he says that violence is actually needed in the whole process. So black people should understand that, you know, when they're dealing with the enemy, they should engage in some kind of rational discourse. They cannot to uh, I cannot expect to the, the enemy to understand, you know, you know, uh, um, their, their their stance of revolt because you know one of the ideas in terms of revolution and, and violence is based on violence because you know white supremacy itself is a violent system. Any form of resistance, any way of questioning the system itself is seen by the oppressor group as a form of violence. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, because of the violence that they, they, they unleash on you, they also understand that uh, at any given point, you know, uh, you know, they can be defeated. So this is why Sister Tarola was making the connection between black fear and white fear, right? If you look at, you know, the history of South Africa, there's a term called Swat Khafar, or black danger, you know, and this goes back to what uh, Brother Tembo was talking about in terms of, you know, uh, Francis Chris Wilson's idea of color confrontation, you know, the idea that uh, it's not just about, you know, the idea that every collective group is what we can call a, a collective uh, survival thrust. You know, each and every group wants to maintain its culture, wants to maintain its race. Now, with the Europeans in South Africa, where they find, you know, the majority of the of the African, the Africans in, 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 in you know, in Azania or in, you know, in, in South Africa being a majority. So it's also the idea that we're in a foreign space and then we have to separate, we have to sustain ourselves we have to maintain ourselves as the europeans and as as, as as a particular culture right and what they do is that in terms of the numbers they see that so this whole fear expresses itself at the level of race right and also in terms of the numbers you know if you look at how they were basically you know when they formulated the idea of south africa in 1910 they were basically saying that look these these two republics you know and the two colonies are not able to deal you know um in a constructive way with the native question, meaning with this majority of Africans whom we've dispossessed and whom we know that at any given time, they'll come back to take what is rightfully there. So they were basically saying no, and you know, so in other words, if you look at South Africa, it's basically founded on white fear. The fear that black people at any given time, they can no, come back and take no, the land. brother, you speaking of fear. How do we remove ourselves from this fear that has been entrenched upon us? as Africans, what is the ultimate solution? Because I like the fact that we have uh, outlined the root cause of the problem and the link between uh, what you call fear and individualism, right? So now, what is the ultimate solution? How can we uh, remove ourselves? Can fear be removed uh, without us removing white people? 
Oh no, I don't think I don't think that's possible. The, the, the only way to deal with this fear is to confront the enemy, is to actually eliminate the enemy. That's the only way because as long as the enemy is still there, you still have the memory of the of the enemy being capable of violence. So as long as the enemy exists, the fear itself won't go away. This is why when when white settlers took the land, because they couldn't you know embark on a clear project of genocide to eliminate the entire African at some point one of the races said you know this Bantu race you know doesn't die but anyway the point is that because they couldn't totally eliminate us of course for political economy reasons they needed our cheap labor power but then because we are constantly there they always have this salt khafaz, this black danger that damn these people as long as they are here we don't know what they can do and and whatever they want to do they're actually justified because they know the europeans themselves that what we did to them if we we're in our in their shoes we'll actually do you know rise and then actually try to you know to seek some kind of revenge not this reconciliation of your desmond to desmond to and others it's, it's just a waste of time <laughs> this whole rainbow nation of, of god and you know reconciling with the enemy it's really um it's really a waste of black power and white power can never coexist oh they can never coexist because in terms of the psyche of the europeans they can only accept a reality where they're in total power and the likes of john henry clark you know makes it clear that they've never seen a society where white people can coexist with other people who are not black without them being in power he says that he, they, there isn't you know any historical record of white people being there and not being in power and being comfortable so the idea that we can coexist with whites and share power it's a form of delusion it's nonsense it's not capable the, you know the, the, my sister was referring to the uh, the two cradle theories developed by the likes of Sheikh and Diop and or later on Hulin de la Oboho. it's quite clear that in terms of this northern cradle which represents their worldview and culture that they you know they, they have this aggression you know they have this uh, you know will to dominate what you know marimba Ani in terms of urugu would call their cultural asil so the cultural asil is basically the seed of their culture the, the culture is what informs their behavior the culture is what informs you know their reality and interest so that when we look at it, when we look at it that way they their, their history from the time they emerged as cavemen from from uh, from the Caucasus mountain they actually wanted to conquer so they they, they the asylum itself manifested itself within them, you know, the, 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 the European community itself. I mean, if you read the likes of your uh, Cedric Robinson in Black Marxism, you know, he makes it clear that even within the European culture itself, there's an ontological hierarchy. There's a hierarchy of, you know, of white. They are white who are more superior to others. So the idea of dominating each other, it's actually at the heart of their culture, even before they actually have contact with people who do not look like them. They were already trying to dominate themselves, you know, trying to have one group be more powerful than the others rather than coexisting. So in other words, in terms of white power and black power, for whites, they only understand white power as power over, not yeah. power with. Yeah. So if you think about power over, there has to be someone that you have exercised that power over, not power with. If you think of power with, it means you can cooperate with someone and work with someone. So if you have, the Europeans have the notion of power over, so they cannot coexist with white power. So And the function of black power is to totally eliminate white power. Yeah. That's the, that's the, the simplest. Which is, okay, maybe okay. your case is that you can come in. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No, I just wanted, also, I also wanted to make a, a quick comment, which also relates to the previous question. In terms of um, 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 fear and 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 you know how we overcome this fear or how it actually manifests. So um, Brother Masilo was mentioning that um, the whites themselves, uh, as Cedric Robinson had said, that they had some sort of hierarchy and they were dominating each other. So now, in terms of um, um, now that we've adopted this cultural asili and 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 we we are finding you know it manifesting in our spaces, what happens is that this fear. Um, um, turns into self-destruction. Brother Masilo also mentioned um, Operation Dudula. Um, we can see the condition of our people. They are destroying themselves in every because they are actually trying to deal with this fear. So there's no way that you cannot uh, that you can deal with the fear uh, or eradicate the fear without um, interacting or confronting whiteness as a whole and its people as well. So if you don't do that, um, it's constant self-destruction, which now relates with 
um, um, white, whiteness or white people themselves actually destroying each other, which goes back to my initial point to Guti. If you are Tina Asiazi, it comes because we interact with mm. these people and it actually manifests the set a mirror of their fear. So there is some linkage um, with what they view as fear. And on our behalf, um, deal with our fear and actually stop us um, stop doing what we actually don't want you to do. So we are actually managing um, the fear through self-destruction. So I don't know what Brother Timba you, you wanted yeah, to say. Yeah, I, I also wanted to maybe to latch on on a few um, things, particularly uh, maybe I'll touch maybe um, Operation to do but with this, you know, reconciliation, you know, um, um, concept or idea, which in, in most cases, in fact, is a, um, it has a, a tendency of also, you know, misappropriating our culture. You know, mm. sometimes they'll speak of words that do this in the spirit of Ubuntu. Mm. You know, they're extending our, you know, humanity to the rest of Europe. Right. In a way, they want to also convert mm. white people from their whiteness in a way, like to, in a way, um, change the makeup of white people by of some sort or, or petition them so much that they can see themselves as people, you know, um, who are wrong, not understanding that these are things that as, you know, um, um, Sister Tarul as well as um, 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 Brother Masilo have shown, these are things that have their source, um, in, you know, in, the, in, the, in their cradle, you know, um, so termed the Northern cradle by um, um, the late um, um, Savian Shek and Tidio, right? Um, which are things that, you know, are even at the level that you cannot, you know, um, 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 change because they, are, they have a, 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 um, a historical also as well as um, um, psychological, biological um, essence to them, which, you know, is unchangeable. I, I think, you know, Marimba Ani makes this association with the seed, the seed. So the nature of a seed is something that, you know, um, you cannot really like, um, an apple is an apple from its seed, like you cannot in a way convert or um, want to um, uh, make it into a banana or something of that sort. It is. It is what it is. But also, this also ties in with this notion of also being them. Um, even when they're speaking to, what they're doing this in the name of African culture. It's not necessarily a true reflection of that because in most cases you find they are in themselves alienated. Mm -hmm. You speak about people for the most part who've embraced even foreign ideologies who now believe in gods. Who are at times they say if you maybe question them, would you speak in the of a white god or something like that? They would say you know, these are things that don't matter. You know, they could it's a colorless or they see no color or you know. Um, they, they, what it matters is the essence or the spirit of a being, you know, yeah. so depending on how an individual relates um, or, or acts towards you, you I'm know, not, then... I'm not, I'm not, my my I'm not, friend is not racist. My, yeah, he like, so it's also, it's also individual. It's also individualistic. My boss, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, looking yeah. at just yourself as an individual, uh, how whites yeah. are able to, to accept you or how they may, you know, be playing the card of, you know, accepting... Because, of course, I mean, also the other thing with white power, it has to also... Um, um, co-opt a few um, individuals from the oppressed group so that it, you know, it's sustainable so that, you know, you could right. also you as a, as a co-opted group can uh, further, you know, um, um, push its agenda, you know, and, and, and also be, be like exemplars to the others who, who haven't really necessarily um, embraced those um, valid, civilizing values or considered civilized by um, um, by whiteness, which you know, these select individuals who have been ex accepted would you know would um, exhibit. So the, the problem is that you know they have you know this conflation of you know now a common you know brotherhood you know who in a way conflate with things that are as fun as Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is quite specific in that it says you, see, um, you reciprocate, right? You speak of my art, right? You you also have to. So by um, reciprocating, you mean that if someone violent. is violent towards you, you have to. Yes, yes, that's, that's, that's yes, that's my art. That's that's <laughs> yeah. by, that's 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 the principle. That's African. You see, you see, if you want to live in accordance with the African card, that's what you're supposed to do. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. In that's in that's in fact, there's always have to be a balance where everything that is done wrong, you have to restore that. There has to be a form of restoration to to maintain a balance, harmony, and order. Sure. So without reciprocating, of course, we we'll continually be in a in a situation where we are, we are you know, uh, that we find we, there's disorder, there's, in a sense there's saying chaos, there's chaos, there's self defense. Or... Yeah, yeah, we must also, in the name of um, 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 finding justice for the blood of our ancestors, there's also yes. the current suffering that is, we have to do something about that. Sure. Right? Yeah. So it's all a right? Yeah. 
Eternal board, it doesn't matter if it happened in fact in many years, many moons or how many seasons ago. Yeah. If something was and this is African culture, like sure. it is I think I believe like in the way that in which even these proponents of Ubuntu shy away from addressing this, yeah, yeah. which you know should be addressed with Italian ball. If you have done something wrong, you have to address it. it has to speak it. Yeah. yeah, that's also interesting. Just to latch on to the brother Tremba's analysis of my art, you know, because even within chematic, you know, um, uh, you know, political history, we can think of the aliens or the invaders as you know symbolizing what is called East Fed, like an evil force, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea of Africans actually, you know, eliminating the enemy, basically killing the enemy, is actually, you know, African. So the idea of converting Abelung or converting the enemy mm -hmm. is a foreign idea because if you go back to the history of ancient Kemet, if you look at um the likes of Amo, Amenhotep the third, you know, these are the people who founded the, the 18th dynasty and later with Ramesses the second in the 19th dynasty. They were quite clear when they dealt with the Hiskos or the invaders, they actually eliminated them and took them out of Egypt itself. They didn't convert them. They said, look, these people are barbarians and they represent evil. The only way you can deal with this is to eliminate them, not to convert them, right? And later on, uh, you know, Ramesses the second, of course, realized that, okay, even if you expel them, you get rid of them. They're still dangerous wherever they are, right? So in other words, you have to go where they are and actually confine them to a particular space. Make sure that uh, that, that they don't come here. But oh, we know that, of course, later on, they were able to come, you know, with the uh, the patients and others. So my point is that even that solution of Ramesses the second of saying, let's confine them to a particular space. You know, if you look back, if you go back with hindsight, we can see that it's not, um, it's not really really a, a final solution as such. In other words, uh, we, we have to imagine uh, the world where there are no whites mm. at all. We have to imagine that for the sake of the preservation of the African race, we have to imagine blacks have to deal, have to reach a point where they have to imagine the world without whites. Sure. Now, in other words, let's, let me get back to the, the issue of reconciliation. John Henry Clark made one, you know, simple statement about these people, you know, these proponents of Ubuntu, uh, that's actually to, going to destroy Abantu, ironically speaking. But the point is that John Henry Clark says, look, so he's given an example of a house, but of course the house represents the, the territory itself, the land where people are staying. So he's saying, if, if I have like a six-room house, right, and a thief breaks into the house, mm. and then I find the thief in the house, I won't negotiate with the thief and say, oh, okay, you know what, you can occupy that other room as long as you behave. He says that I will negotiate with the undertaker to get rid of the body of the thief. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did have a a, um, a question for, for, for Brother Temba um, with regards to Ma'at and Ubuntu. So um, um, how would you, uh, uh, you know, mention the key differences between what we, most especially, you know, as South Africa, understand as Ubuntu and wh what it has come to be, and you know, Maat as 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 we know it, you know, the the the, the balancing. So, what would you say um, um, was taken away from Maat to make uh, Ubuntu for either marketing purposes, for um, fear management? Um, um, what was taken away to represent to African people to actually be the leading, you know, the, 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 the leading aspect of, of managing this fear in terms of white people? Because people would think Ubuntu, Lobo, Obu, Obu Marketed is the Ubuntu Obabo Vele. So I just want you to, to, to just say maybe what would be the differences with Ubuntu that white people um, 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 reconcile with or understand and us as 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 a band to you know relating with my art yeah no i i would i would have to maybe make like a a a, a distinction between ubuntu as practiced by abantu and ubuntu as um in a way um academic academized or like in a way put by or or just jay like um 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 practiced by a group of elite uh, mm -hmm. i mean how maybe they um, act as a form of like, and, and they treat it as a form of the anthropology of sorts, where you know it's just something that is studied, and in fact it is purposely, purposely done so that you know they get to pick uh, maybe those attributes that could maybe help even sustain or maintain a white supremacy. So these are, are people who are already um, in that camp, but are looking at things that perhaps they can see, which could maybe people understand this language, 
of Bond, and we can maybe further use it to. So I find it as a way. It's the, the, there's a version that, in a way, it's a it's a weaponized way yes. against against um, 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 the will of a band. In that, in most cases, you find when people give their version of Ubuntu as they know it and as they've lived it, right? It is often questioned well, that's not even Ubuntu. Because Ubuntu, you know, as a people maybe will get to, you know, uh, uh, come up with concept or academize stuff or do some form of, you know, intellectual, um, um, yeah, yeah, bogus, um, okay, yeah, masturbation, we could, you could use the term. Oh, okay. Uh, like, I often hear people saying that, why should we make it about color? It's all down in the past. Uh, Mandela fought for us. Uh, what would you say to them? Yeah, no, I suppose, no, 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 no. I suppose one of the things maybe one could say is also, I mean, this will also come back to this question of how Ubuntu has been, you know, mm-hmm. appropriated and used. It has to, has to come across as something that is not harmful towards or dangerous towards, yes. you know, um, 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 whites. Um, so it, it, this this I mean um, speaks to um, also like the, the this notion of wanting to accommodate your whiteness, seeing that mm-hmm. in fact, and then this also would also come to this question of fear, mm-hmm. which you have we've seen with you know Asia, I know um, whiteness is so powerful and so perverse, and you know um, maybe even the strides that we've made in attempting to undo it, you know, they haven't been so successful. And you check perhaps also the, you know, because also I mean you think about also the examples in which white um, um, people would make of those maybe who revolt, yeah. and you know you have that history and you see it's okay. This is what has happened to them. So you in a way you have to imagine a society in which you know that con- confrontation no longer. Um, um, exist or or, or 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 is there, and and I think also I mean coming back to this issue of e, 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 um, 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 fear as well, and you know wanting to accommodate. What, I think there was a a, a um, at some point, um, oh, Mama Francis Crossing where you know uh, you know she would teach you know young kids and whatnot, and then she would have like images maybe such as you know the one that we have here for fact by who uh, Malcolm X you know and others you know, where. You know, you would want to set these up as exemplars of which, you know, this is what maybe men who are black, you know, men who are women which should, you know, be, or, or as children, you know, these are role models that one ought to look up to. But given that, you know, the, the, the fate that these individuals would have met, you know, a lot of like young people, I think this was a discussion that I had with um, Brother Masil at some point, where, in fact, some of these kids were even saying that um, they don't want to be like that guy. Like they don't want to be like the guy. You know why? Well, His fate was obvious. He was killed. He died. So why do I want to die? And why do I? So I don't want to be like that guy. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I, that's that's an interesting point because of course you you, you, you find that narration in, in in the last chapter of the ISIS papers by Mama Fraskers Wilson where she was uh, she was a child psychologist so she was teaching these kids so you know she was um, basically saying why do you want to be educated? So this is a group of you know uh, black children. Why do you want to be educated? You know. And and you know you know and the, and the student was basically saying yes I do want to be educated but uh, I don't want to be educated in such a way that you know I want to help black people right it goes back to individualism I want to be educated to make it or educated to survive I don't want to be educated to help black people because you know and and and, and, and Mama asked why and, and and the boy said no I, they will kill me right um, and I will die in the process so one example another example that you know shows the where the, the fear comes from, of course, the idea that once you confront the system, you will die in the process. That, that's true. We know the history of Lumumba, Sankara, and others. But another simple example, right, which will go back to what Andy Le Minajam and the PLF were talking about, and this Julius Malema killed kill the farmer, kill the bull stuff. So one, there was a, a racist um, anthropologist called Margaret Mead. So she had an interview with the uh, with James Baldwin, right, the author of numerous books, you know, Another Country and things like that. So they were, as they were having this discussion, of course it's racist, so they were having this discussion and um, she was basically saying, so as an anthropologist, they do what they call field work, right? So she had to go to an African country, I think it's called, um, do, well, a country dominated by, by Africans, it's called New Guinea or something like that. So she says she was there and she's a woman, she's a white woman. So you have black men who were working there because they were enslaved, right? And she was saying she was basically 
trying to direct them, dominating them. As a white woman, alone, there were no white men, she was alone, but controlling them, you know, and in such a way that they were even scared of them. And these are black men. She's, there's basically 20 or 30 of them, she's just one woman, and they were clearly scared of her. And James Baldwin was basically saying, no, they are scared of you, not because of you as an individual as you were there, but because you represent white power. You, as, as you're being there, you represent white supremacy. They know very well that if they kill you, the white power, the system that you represent will come back and kill more. And this is why at some point Andy Lim Natam, I think, was talking about, you know, the idea that for every single black life that is taken, you know, five white lives have to be taken. Sure. And they were said, no, this is controversial and things like that. But, but you know, she was basically in the time I was trying to deal with this whole thing of white fear that black people have to adapt or reach a point where they train their mind to actually confront the enemy and to think about actually killing the enemy because you know in in a way it's a form of a, a self-defense and also the restoration of the dignity of our ancestors who were humiliated and killed in the entire process i think brother temple referred to marimba and you were basically saying that you know the idea of destroying maafa and the agents of maafa is to basically retrospectively restore the dignity of our ancestors because as we are as africans we're actually the embodiment of their spirit you know whenever you turn pages or you like you went with maybe if there i mean there are many who watch even movies and they watch all these productions there's always like this superman type of image of the white man who is you know goes down and can can you know can 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 kill about anyone is you know is in distract and a white man in particular right and of course this makes sense i mean you're speaking about a patriarchal society not not to say that you know white women don't have a role i think he was making an example with regards to that white um, so so they're also you know in a way um it's a, it's a it's a collective effort but mostly the images that you would see um it is images of you know these um um um, um, um white people or white men in particular who are able to you know conquer everyone and everything and these are things that you know are instilled from you know um, children once growing up i think there was an experiment that they did with the they call it what the dog test experiment i think where with children you know were shown at times like certain like black doors and you know white doors and they would you know more often than like like the you know prefer um the option of you know the white the white one that find it more prettier and you know all those those things because those are the um, that's the sentiment and those are the images that are portrayed and that's you know the the, 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 the the image of beauty and the standards of beauty are those ones that you know often and and sometimes it's it's, it's done subliminal you know it's, it's things that you know a kid is just coming on the tv and watching it's just you know his favorite cartoons and you know those values that are there and pushed um are most like eurocentric type of you know concepts and ideas so these are things that happen at that level so even that in fact this also boils to even this fear so even that fear and association with whiteness begins at the very at a very low level now how do we counteract that exactly? yeah I, I i think that has been you know maybe covered in a way which we have to basically yeah. we'll yeah. that's Culture. the foundation yeah. you know yeah. Yeah, but just to let you on to that, you know, you have the, the likes of Karen G. Watson who wrote a book called The Miseducation of the Negro, right? Yeah. So this track experiment done by a black psychologist in the States was actually a way of testing this thesis of, you know, Karen G. Watson, you know, the miseducation of the Negro. And one important thing in terms of the distortion of history and the cultivation of, of black fear, uh, Wade Nobles basically defines power size because that's the attainment of power. The fear itself is in the interest of white power. He basically defines power as the ability to define reality and to have other people respond to the reality as if it's their own. Mm -hmm. And what you know, Amos, Amos Wilson in the falsification of African consciousness talks about the fact that the history itself, the Europeans over glorify themselves to a point where they want to intimidate the oppressed group, that without them, there's nothing else that they can do. So in other words, this is why there has to be a proper African historiographical tradition that tries to negate this kind of Western, you know, Western uh, propaganda that terrorizes black people. I think it was Kenneth Kaunda in uh, Zambia Shall Be Free. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure where you know he was giving uh, an example that you know if, if 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 a lion writes a story about hunting the lion itself will actually glorify itself so until the hunted tries to write their own history the lion will continue to glorify himself oh uh, yeah i actually wanted to 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 make the to just remind us of weight novel's definition uh, of power 
as in terms of the adoption of or just the foreign reality. And I've been waiting for the two brothers to actually um, uh, mention, uh, uh, you know, because they've been mentioning Francis Chris Wilson. So I'm waiting, you know, the idea of here in terms of the circular and the linear. But in terms of um, 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 before maybe you guys get to it, um, I think the most important thing here that we have established is the, the that we might have a fear of death um 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 as as africans i don't know a uh, fear of a, a, a long death a, a long suffering that leads to death or death in it in itself so the 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 the, the fear um um is because of the imagination of death of, of death which is quite uh, ironic because you know we are aware or we should be aware that the spirit does regenerate um 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 the body is, is 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 part of you know some some is part of the three you know it's part of it, 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 it the body is just a body and it does get renewed and 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 why is it that we are we are so um scared of death in itself scared of being killed scared of being you know uh, uh scared of dying when we know that you know we're not even outnumbered so so what if we die like so so what if we die because we know that you know uh, 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 we do out, out, outnumber, you know, whatever no, uh, nations that we want to we want to dominate. But what is the problem? Is it religious? Um, that we, do we fear death for religious reasons? Do we fear death because our oppressor fears death? Do we fear um, 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 death because we're so individualistic, narcissistic that we can't imagine the world without us as individuals? Like, what? What? Why are we so fearful of death? And and and. I, I personally, I'd even think that, you know, when you're scared to die, it's simply because you're not playing your role as you should be. You're not living within your calling. You're not satisfied um, with yourself. You know, whatever whatever you were sent here to do, it's because um, you're not doing that. And so you constantly want to postpone death. You constantly, I'd rather suffer. I'd rather um, 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 eat... Uh, uh, um, I don't know, it's, it's as little as I can than to actually get um, uh, what is mine and plant, get the land. I'd rather... Uh, no, sorry, sorry to cut you off. You know, this thought, you know, um, yesterday I was with this uh, old woman and he told me that he doesn't care. We were speaking about the issue of land. You know? he say, she said that uh, she doesn't care about the land here on earth. Uh, up in the sky. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just, yeah. yeah, no, yeah, that's the thing is that yeah. the, the, those factors contribute yeah. to our action, our, our us dealing with the condition. Like yeah. you know, um, 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 I, I don't know, maybe I, I, I'm being disrespectful to some people, but in terms of that as a form of ideal, it soothes the wound. You know, mm. it, it helps us postpone certain things, our duties that we should do. If you believe that. Uh, great if you do but it does not mean you don't have a duty here and that duty is not about telling us um 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 that what you have because as if you have to imagine uh, if you just think about it there is some sort of individualism because if i'm i have and stuff i don't really give if uh, brother Timber makes it with me. It's about me. Right. If I make it, if I'm worthy, if I'm, you know, if I'm living within the line, if I'll be chosen, you know, if I have the gift, you know, and share it, people can see how great I am. It's individual individualism, and we don't we don't have it um, um, as as African people. So this 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 fear of 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 death. And I mean, if no mshabale, why is that You know. Uh, 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 why, 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 so it's because you haven't figured out to live in the reality, Guti. You might have a land there, but you have to deal with hell now because there's every um example that you know you can think of that shows that there's hell and you need to deal with it. How are you putting out the fires? And 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 perhaps we could start with just the fear of death in itself. Think of um, our own people who've died while fighting, our own people who could volunteer, Gafe, you know, would see, um, I'd rather die than live. slaves who would jump, you know, into the sea um, um, because they just rather. Um, um, so what, what is it um, about ourselves that, you know, death is so traumatic? Um, 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 yes, we've, we've died, we've suffered. But the thing is that even though we've suffered, we're still not done. 
you know we can't now pause because you're there's too much blood that's been shed and now we must identify with the with the oppressor and stuff so how do we deal with the fear of death because i'm finding as you guys are speaking as the foundation of the fear that actually stops um the revolution from taking place yeah, yeah. i mean uh, i'm not sure if Temba. yeah sure. no um, okay. um um let me maybe yeah okay i would i'll just maybe be preferable so that you, know, you get your yeah um, you can also expand on the on the on the, um, on the question as well or exposition as it were. So um, yeah, so so okay. So the one part um, maybe that I just want to also perhaps I will deal with is also with this regard of um, also you know um, I think this is also mean we've mentioned earlier you know the association with you know or or in or the miseducation as a you so we have it. In which now, because of you know, we've been exposed to a certain type of culture, which maybe values the material over everything else. Of yeah. course, I mean we are here. There's a purpose, and we know that the material also has a. In our culture, we don't, you know, we value like in fact things such as you know human life and the purpose that you know, um, that life is here to serve. You know, rather than in in you know in the Western sense where you know the material is you know. Um, placed above everything else where you know you have obsession with amassing stuff you know you have obsession with you know maintaining this boy over you know your spiritual death because in most cases you find that you know many people may live to a, a, a you know old age however you find with it for the most part they would have been they would have died long ago because they would have surrendered their spirits to to our oppressors and would have you know in a way allowed them to direct how you know that cause ought to be so um with regards to also this issue of fears because which i think like we were sister terura like was you know expounding on the issue um um quite quite nicely in that you know if you know your purpose and you are saving it towards you know you're you're living your life towards that end this concept of fear of yeah, warfare yeah, yeah. is nothing that you know so that is really um for us we know what's there's no because we know what's the spaces right you transit yeah. you transition to um and so in, even in our in our spins lab we know what there's the presence of you know um those we call the um the 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 the, the, the okay well there's that in that um uh, concept of what there's the living dead there's the living and the yet to be born right in that even now it's in your best line of our own being and and we find with the, there's no contradiction in saying what you in calling ourselves the names of our four pets because you know what they need they live amongst us hence why we're even able to use our 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 names our names which i think those who maybe have adopted my, my ideologies also may have those contradictions to sort out with why do they sometimes still continue to call themselves um those who have ikaya elile and I know, why they still continue to call themselves by you know the names of you know sometimes those people that they demonize but you know um abaseko you know uh, then they, there's nothing that they can do for you you know they died and all those things for us we know which even if i've served my purpose gosh appropriately and this is something that you know even today people you know understand in culture right so that would be also be informed by the type of life that you would have led in your life so if you know what you've already done good when i you are content with even moving because yeah. you know where you're going. You know you'll still be um, consulted. You'll still be in touch with the Aban who are um, still um, going through Cheniabo in the material um, um, form. Which of course for us is also you know there's that connection or link with this. So do you think we have a collective? Per- so you're saying yes, we have purposes and callings and. In terms of our ancestors, we're speaking about, you know, individuals, but you might have a... Gene and, you know, the disposition that white people, you know, were meeting out at the time. Um, so there is a responsibility, a sacred responsibility to avenge even the, 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 the blood that was spilled of, you know, the sacred blood of our, um, of our forebears and our ancestors. So we do have like a responsibility to, you know, um, um, address some of the um, 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 child issues, you know, that they would have, you know. Some have, people okay. say we don't, we don't need to. It's it's old, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, no, but, but of course, know. I mean, the, the, the in fact, even it's it's strange because everybody knows Uti, um, 
the, the, the past is always present in a way. <laughs> Not everybody. Yeah. Well, well, well it's selective, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think selective. they, they yeah. are. They're okay. selective. Okay. They are because in a way, there's an example that um, Amos Wilson makes with respect to that. We see even today, the ability of you to speak is dependent on when, when you were young. You right. were able to pick up the tongue and right. the ability to walk is a historical thing. We see, you cannot say this thing happened in the past and it doesn't matter. If that was the case, you wouldn't be able to have, you wouldn't be able to talk today. Because that is, a, is something that would have happened, um, you know, not today. It would have been something that would have been, you know, going on. In fact, even before you come into um, um, into this world, it's something that the, the use of a language, the use of, you know, I'm, I'm making an example with right. the language, but I mean, I think you can, you know, ex, um, extend it to, to, to other other things as well. You know, which, there's no such thing as, would say, you know, I want to like selective, honestly speaking, like they know what is <laughs> to the their past, individual to their individualistic demand, yeah. So what's it, okay, now I can choose to say which this doesn't matter, it happened in the past. But I know which in certain instances, the past is always present. People people are well it conscious depends. of that. Yeah, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing because uh, you have the likes of Abu um, Don Matera who basically wrote a book called Memory is a Weapon, right? Um, and and Marimba Ani, of course, you know, cautions us to say that whenever we analyze the, um, the our condition of Maafa, we need to operate from the African worldview and African culture. She's basically saying, otherwise we'll be confused. If we adopt any other cultural basis or worldview, we'll get confused as Africans. So this ties into what, uh, you know, um, Brother Tem was talking about in terms of the how the idea of the living, the living dead, and the yet to be born are intertwined. So there's another, you know, African philosopher called Theophilus Okero basically says that in terms of African culture, the past, the present, and the future are intertwined. They are basically the present itself is what you know, the past is what the new generation is basically living out. Now, this is why one of the, the leaders of the um, of, of, of you know national liberation in South Africa called um, Anton Nembere basically came up with the idea of Heroes Day, right? Which was later you know taken up by the likes of Sobuke. Basically, what he was trying to point out is that we as the living, we are basically a continuation of a of the tradition of resistance of our ancestors. Right. In other words, we are basically it's like a marathon. We are basically taking on the baton and pay, continuing with, with with the war. I'll come back to the question of you know black fear and 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 and, and how we actually reason. John Henry Clark makes the, this point that um, you know as Africans we have to be we have to reach a point where we f we think about us as a sacrificial generation, right? That will lay down the f the foundation for the prosperity of the you know the, the of the coming generation. So if you look at what our enemies are doing, right? You know you know when John van Riebeck and his uh, you know uh, criminal virus you know came to South Africa, what they were basically doing, they understood that okay, we're dealing with you know. Uh, this is a war. They basically declared a war, right? And they understood that they're going to die in the war. But what they were thinking about is basically the conquest itself by the white race. Not that particular generation that was waging a war, but the descendants will just come in and continue where, where they started. So as Africans, we have to reach a point where we think of this generation and, and, and basically, um, you know, assume that collective, you know, responsibility of avenging the spirit of our ancestors. Right. I, don't know, you know. Um, I think right now as we're saying we're avenging um the spirits of 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 our ancestors we should just let brother kulani maybe uh uh, uh phrase it in his own words or maybe show us the understanding uh, uh, uh make us understand you know how and why we shouldn't really fear death because we have the duty of uh avenging the spirits of our ancestors i believe that uh, everyone has their own peoples in life you understand and the process of becoming is a process of one discovering themselves. And then I like the fact that you explained it better yeah, when, when you alluded initially that once you understand and know yourself, you won't fear death. You understand? So I would say that once you have a thorough knowledge of self, then you'll be better equipped to know that with death is just an illusion. We are just merely ancestors, retaining ancestors, having a human experience. and. We have to leave it to the atmosphere and make sure that we fulfill our purpose as Africans. And our purpose, Tina, this current generation, is to decolonize the minds of our own kind, is to overthrow white supremacy, and 
and then those who will come after us they will continue with the economic revolution there has to be a spiritual revolution there has to be a cultural revolution there has to be a revolution from a broader context right, right. Yeah. hey thank you brothers masilo and brother temba for your contribution uh, obviously you guys have to come back because we weren't we weren't done and we'd like to learn much more from you so uh thank you thank you to my co-host as well and to those who are still watching uh, clearly you don't have fear uh, and and oh you're 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 dealing with it keeper so you can show us that uh Uti, your fear is going away by liking by subscribing by commenting asking questions and also you know maybe asking questions to our brothers that for the next episode you'd like us to actually um deal with thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day he seems like power ready for revolution ready for revolution, ready for revolution. <laughs>